Hey guys, welcome back to Artosis Cast. Today, we are going to be going into a game between MC up here at 12 o'clock and in the bottom right, the uh, ASL Champion Royal. So obviously, if you watch Artosis Cast a lot, you know who Royal is. He is one of the best Terran players in the world. He is an insanely good optimizer. He's actually pushing the Terran envelope forward more than most other Terrans. Uh, definitely has his own style, his own builds. He's like the only Terran that's taking Ghost seriously, although most of those attempts have failed at this point. Uh, but a fantastic Terran, and definitely one that every Terran player should keep an eye on. Now, MC, I've tried to, I've been trying to cast some of his games, <laughs> right? Uh, and, you know, some of them have been quite good, and some of them uh, not so much, uh, but... Looking forward to seeing what he's going to bring here. I want to remind people about MC, right? I say this every time I cast him, but obviously uh, one of the most successful Protoss ever in StarCraft II. A GSL champion, literally a legend in StarCraft II, okay? He is one of the most important players in the history of the game. He did so much. Such a big personality. Uh, one of the most beloved players ever. Uh, and don't forget, he was extremely good. He was w like one game away from qualifying from two Star Leagues right before he switched to StarCraft II. So he was like right on the brink of being a top of the world player. Now, he went to StarCraft II for a long time. Then he did like some coaching and stuff. Like I think he, you know, he coached in some other games and did some work in esports. But he's been back playing pretty hard and he's very highly ranked. Uh, so yeah, he's been getting better and better at StarCraft 1 here once again. So anyways, we're on Sylphid, three-player map. MC gets down here and scouts Royal rather quickly. Well, you know, not, not quickly enough to steal gas or anything, but quickly enough to be annoying. Now, I do want to mention one thing that you see here. Notice how Royal is chasing with an SCV and not scouting, okay? When a probe gets to your base this early, if you scout and chase with an SCV, your factory ends up very late. <laughs> so that's why he hasn't done that. See, two minute, 30 second factory, and he'll just scout later. So good optimizations here uh, from, from Royal. That's definitely something I see uh, a lot of errors from with like A rank and below Terran players where the probe comes and they'll still go scout. A lot of times it's better to just save your minerals and, and just slow your build down a little bit. But anyways... Uh, he gets up here and will find MC first try. Of course, the Zealot is already on its way, so we're going to have to see some heavy micro here out of Royal. One thing I would love to see is a third depot, uh, but let's see what this uh, Zealot micro looks like here from, from MC. Now, he's getting in here. Yeah, three Marines, you got to turn around. No third depot. No third depot. If you're not going to third depot, you got to push with this fourth Marine and take your command center literally instantly. Let's see it. No additional depot. <laughs> I'm getting... He's going to be supply blocked for a while if he's not careful. Uh, now, a second Zealot came down, but looks like it turns around here as well. The SCV just kind of waiting, watching to see if MC is going to go ahead and take a Nexus. The Dragoon will come out and probably end up killing that off. Now, we have a bunker happening here being made uh, at the natural base. And, oh, he actually canceled a Marine. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, does have that money for the depot and does get it started as well. Okay, so where are we at? The Nexus is just about to start. And yeah, there it goes. Okay, so let's look at the timings of these. So Terran has an advantage right now. Without any question, uh, Royal is slightly advantaged. It's not a huge deal. Oh my God. Well, he's going to become more advantaged now. Uh, this is really unfortunate for MC. Really unfortunate. He had plenty of units to block that, and it just didn't happen. I think he was looking at this Dragoon as he went down for his scout. Uh, so he ends up killing, like, three probes. So now, suddenly, not only do we have the command center up first, we also have uh, more, more workers for Terran right now, right? So he's up, like, two to three workers. Plus, he's going to be getting, let's see, what, how much is left on that? About a third. So he's going to get about two more. So we should be up about four workers here total uh, for Royal by the time that MC stabilizes making two probes at a time. So that's 
that is incredibly rough, right? Uh, now, it is not the end of the world. It is absolutely something you can come back from. But these little things play into the rest of the game. So definitely, I think Royal has a better opener here. Throws his academy down. So the academy is going to be what he uses that advantage for. Love to see it. I think it's very well timed and everything. In the meantime, uh, Robotics Facility coming up for MC. MC really does like Reavers from what I've seen of his uh, Protoss versus Terran. He's got very good shuttle micro. Not surprised. He was known very much so for his uh, micro and his attacking in StarCraft 2. So, yeah, kind of carrying that forward as he goes back into StarCraft 1. The armory is spinning. Still making siege tanks here. Uh, no siege mode as of yet. He'll probably start it relatively soon. And, of course, as that academy comes up, he'll want to get those comm stats going so he can scout exactly what the tech will end up being. Second factory gets started. And look, I this is this is actually a really good game uh, for people to learn from. Like if you're if you're watching this just, you know, to, to watch a great Starcraft uh, one pro game, then that's something. And if you're watching this to try to learn, it's these are very good builds on both sides with good reactions on both sides. Right. So let me explain that a little bit. Notice how MC is still in one gate. He's made units very consistently off the gate, so he actually has a lot of units, right? So he's got this, these four Dragoons, Dragoon at home, two Zots that he had made early for the pressure that he did not sacrifice that are going to be loaded with the Reaver, which is exactly what you want with the Reaver, right? The Reaver is coming out very fast. He's going to be in this base by 7 minutes, 30 seconds. Now, over on Royal's side, he didn't get Siege too quickly, right? He, he kind of kept track of what was going on. He got a reasonable scout with his SCV. He knew he was a little bit ahead. He got into the comm sats. He knew that he wasn't going to be hitting like a Dark Templar right away, anything like that. And look at this. Now he's going to utilize the mobile air defense that is existing with the Goliath uh, to help block any incoming shuttles. And he's going to have that siege mode ready as well. So really looking at this, it's like really fantastic play on both sides. Just very, very good stuff. Now, here comes MC's shuttle. I don't expect much damage here. So he's trying to get out of Siege Tank range because the Reaver range is more than Siege Tank outside of Siege Mode. So it doesn't quite do that. Royal moves, moves forward very, very quickly there. The shuttle turning around, coming back towards the front. There's not a lot of ins. Like, you can fly in and sacrifice a Zealot to get a hit. That's definitely a move. Yeah, it gets a Scarab off there, but takes the shields off here and a little bit of hull damage to the Zealot, so not great. Might drop one here, so he drops the high health one. Now, what you just saw there, I, I need to explain that because that's a very high level move and something, honestly, we should see more of. So what happened was he dropped the Zealot and he was waiting for these two tanks to fire. What Royal did was he grabbed them and he spammed the S button. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, and that stops them from firing on the Zealot, so no splash damage here, but also holds them because as soon as they fire, he drops the Reaver and gets a Scarab. If they don't fire and you drop the Reaver, he'll target the Reaver immediately, right? So that's the little play that you saw going on there. So no real damage dealt. Uh, you know, he lost a Zealot. That's not a big deal. It's worth it for the, you know, losing a Zealot, trying to get that, that move to work. And against 99% of all Terran players, more than that, 99.99% probably of all Terran players, you'll be able to drop that Zealot, they'll shoot, and then you drop the Reaver and get a free shot. Against... ASL champion, nope, stops that. Beautiful plays, beautiful plays. So Royal going up to more factories. He's got the double armory going really well optimized. Look at this. eBay coming up very, very late. He has a Wraith to help out against uh, any incoming shuttles still and his third command center. Let's look at MC's base. All right, Citadel. We have the Forge coming up. He is still only on two gates. He's got a third base up in mining and he started his fourth. This is incredibly greedy from MC. But if you look at the army his opponent has, it kind of works, okay? Look at this. Right now, seven siege tanks and a handful of vultures. For anti-air, we have like a Goliath somewhere. Uh, yeah, there it is. And one Wraith, right? This army will not just die to this army. Like you'll kite back a little bit. You'll hit it with scarabs. You'll, you'll run back and everything. And he knows that it's upgrade Terran. So you're just light on units. And if you lose these tanks, you're going to lose the game. So MC has countered this by being incredibly greedy. 
he's adding on his gateways now and he's gonna have to add a lot of units like what we'll probably see is him go up to like 10 gateways and just macro out shuttles and units right shuttles reavers you know zealots he'll probably get into psi storm eventually all that good stuff but yeah right now it's all about producing units for mc royal is setting up he's thrown down uh his turret he does have a couple of wraiths now no add-on or anything but really good to get multiple wraiths so you can force that shuttle back like if he finds this right here look at this he'll just go right after it and you gotta you gotta pull it way back get some decent shots there Ooh, it takes a lot of damage on those race you do have to be careful they die very easily now royal moving into position to take his third base the reavers coming back in they don't even care that there's race there the dragoons were blocking any big shots so tries to get some damage doesn't really get it and Royal is going to be able to land and take his third base. Not as common a third base to take in these positions. A lot of times, Terrans like to take this third, but I'm not surprised because Royal, uh, the type of way he plays is very gas heavy. He's very tank heavy. He goes upgrades quicker than pretty much anyone, so I think he just wants that third gas. Okay. MC. Still adding gates. Let's take a look. So he's got right now six finished. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six more on the way and another robo. So he's going up to 12 gates, pretty much what's anticipated, and just mass speed shuttles. So very good stuff for him to transition into. Now, will he be getting damage? It looks like he's setting up triple shuttle here to fly into the main base. We have some pretty well-placed mines, some pretty well-placed turrets, a nicely placed siege tank, but obviously three shuttles of units will overwhelm that. You're going to have to send some units back. But don't forget, we have two wraiths out here, which are going to do fantastically instantly instantly turns those around to get in here now the dragoons are the problem because the wraiths can clear everything notice how he brings the dragoons and targets the wraiths look at this this is a micro battle between dragoons and wraiths right now he gets one of those wraiths out and the other one is going to be killed so that does very well that means the shuttles still have a lot of wiggle room here for micro siege tanks as well as vultures coming up trying to erase these units but of course, with the shuttles, you can pick them up once again. He's going to go ahead and lead with the empty shuttle and get out with the two Reavers. Beautiful. I have chills. I have chills. Beautifully executed. The two Dragoons were literally exactly for what they did there. Because if you don't kill the race, all the shuttles die. Everything you drop off dies. So the fact that he gets out with two Reavers, even though they're damaged, and two shuttles, it was three shuttles, two Dragoons, four Zealots, and the Reavers. Right? Right? So he got out with a lot. That was excellent defense from Royal and an excellent drop from MC. Now, MC is actually getting into uh, Scarab Damage now, which has become more popular. Uh, Scarab Damage specifically in this matchup is very, very good because it means that two Reavers with two volleys will kill a four block of depots. Uh, I don't see any four blocks right now, and I think that that's probably intentional. Terrans have gotten a lot more careful about placing depots because Reavers are so popular. But like... Okay, so you see this? Like, if you target there, it'll kill all three of these depots with two volleys from the two Reavers at the 125 damage. So, yeah, very, very good move if you're planning on diving in a whole bunch. Uh, if you're planning on making Reavers throughout the game, which has become more popular as well. 3-2 upgrades are on the way for Royal. He is definitely thinking about more bases right now. Yeah, there's the 4th Command Center. A big, big army has been fielded as well. Looks like MC just checking to see what's what. He has four High Templars and four Zealots in these shuttles. The Dragoon's just kind of removing some of these mines, making it hard for him to do anything. And a lot of Vultures going for a counterattack. This is actually really good because there's no Dragoons up here. Wow, he really finds an opening here with these Vultures. Vultures doing a great job in the meantime. Oh God, missed that drop because we were watching the Vultures kill everything, but he killed 12 SCVs with a couple of Psy Storms in there. Zealots dropped out here as well, so a very worthwhile drop. Only loses a single Zealot in that. But don't forget, he did lose a lot of Zealots up here. But right now, 70 probes going against 40 SCB. So the economy of Royal is actually becoming extremely weak right now. Look at this. The SCB saturation, very poor, very poor, very good. Okay, that's not looking super hot. And don't forget, these are reduced mineral patches. These only start at 1,000 apiece. So Royal actually has to take an expansion. There is no way that Royal is going to push into a victory right now. So he simply must expand again. And honestly, he needs to expand twice. Okay, like right now, if you expand again, it's like, okay, well, we can max out. 
We can rebuild this economy. But realistically, by the time you've rebuilt your economy, you're secured and you're uh, maxed out again, you're going to need another base because this is going to be gone. Well, actually, this has fair minerals. So maybe you can sit on four base for a little bit longer, but this will be gone quicker than you think. Quicker than you think. So right now, looking at MC, he's moving around. He's removing some of these mines, bringing his army together right now. Hasn't gone above those 12 gates. And he is thinking about the fifth base. There you go. The fifth nexus. Looks like he's getting ready for a sixth nexus as well. Flies in over these missile turrets once again. Good defense matrix. The mines definitely blew up quite a few units in here. We didn't catch every single unit. But this is also being used for a counterattack. Look at this. He makes uh, Royal send a bunch of units in the main base. Then attacks into this third. Dropping out High Templars. Getting some storms down on top of these siege tanks. Oh, man, the Zealots just running through absolutely everything, getting on top of every single tank. Ridiculously good play here from MC. This was quite a good trade. Even gets a science vessel. He's getting a few SCVs in here. Honestly, he should just run back with these Dragoons. No sense giving up six Dragoons. He's diving hard for the vessel. He actually does get it. You know what? I, I think absolutely giving up three Dragoons for that's fine based on the economies right now. So he gets out of there. There is still a Zod in here, kind of annoying. He'll have to clean that up. And he actually has to re turret here and relay mines. Uh, you cannot let that be another droppable location for your opponent to uh, attack into again. Now, during this, it looks like he has just sent his SCVs over to this new fourth base location. This is a mineral only base, has seven patches. So it's pretty reasonable. This is going to give him a lot of income for quite some time. Looks like a missile turret can be thrown down as well. Might want to put a few mines in there because certainly that's something that MC is going to be looking for pretty soon. Starting to do a little bit of a spread as well. The buildable terrain does start around here, so you can see a missile turret going down, laying some mines, putting some tanks. These are both like kind of zoning areas, right? <coughs> Excuse me, the front of the defense. And you can bring the rest of your roaming army up to help uh, to block any incoming attacks as well. So MC, he has his fifth base up. Cannon's going down everywhere. Sixth base is almost done as well. Still double robo pumping. Still 12 gates, right? Four, eight, 12. So, uh, you know, he's spending his money. So that's really what matters, right? Like get the production that you actually need uh, to get that, that money spent to keep that army supply as high as possible. He's still sitting on 71 probes. Come in. Oh, no, you shouldn't be doing this. Shouldn't be doing this. This is not a very strong army that we see. But he does have the double shuttle, so it looks like he wants to try it anyways. Dropping some zealots on top of these tanks. But as you can see, this was that was certainly not good for MC. That was an excellent block. And honestly, like, I don't think you should ever, at this late into the game, attack with, like, just this small piece of army. He was, like, basically looking to see if this base was there and see if he could get some damage if it was. But there was enough units here that that attack was just, it was a bit foolhardy. But if you look back at home, he is remaxing on a very, very strong army. Lots of shuttles, lots of high Templars. Reavers still mixed in there as well with that 125 damage. Looks so like he's thinking about clearing out this other side. These three bases, if you end up taking two of these as MC, you're going to win this game. Okay? If you can get those two bases secured, not much chance for Royal. If Royal can kind of deny, like there can be games where Royal takes this base, this base, this base, and then denies this, but MC gets this, that becomes winnable. That's It's still doable for Terran at that point, okay? It's it's kind of a crazy map, Silphid. There's a lot of different ways that it can go into that late game. Uh, but very oftentimes, it's just kind of like if Terran can control this middle area, you control these center bases very easily. And then you can cut things off and then kill other fringe bases as well. But, of course, Protoss has been very aggressive trading supply throughout this. Oh, man. Sorry. I know you guys hate it when I miss drop. But it looks like I did miss one there. But trust me, it, one size storm drop, not as important right now, is checking out the actual flow of this game and what they're aiming to do. Because, for again, for Royal's spot, I think he wants to take over this area. Because, again, if he takes over this area, this base, this base, this base, all become kind of his. Uh, obviously, the shuttles can still fly around it, and that's what MC is trying to do right now. But you don't end up winning the game very often by flying in with shuttles repeatedly, especially at top levels. So it drops everything out. The Psystorms do a good job, and that is some great SCV dancing. Really doesn't lose too much on the SCVs. 
So he'll be able to take out that Archon, and yeah, that's not going to be any more damage to his economy. Sitting pretty on 61 probes. So now, look at this. He's basically maxed out and rebuilt his economy. That's what I was talking about, and I was talking about uh, what you're going to have left, right? So empty, as said, very low, very low. So that lines up with what I was talking about, right? Where it's like, he's about to be on one base. So really what he needed to do was take two bases. And here you go. This is that other base as he has kind of stabilized his economy and stabilized his supply. MC double expanding over here, throwing down a bunch of cannons. That's just to make sure vultures can't run up by themselves and kill it. Very strong army being fielded in front of his base. Lots of high Templars in there. Love that they have the Kadaran amulet as well. Looks like he's actually getting ship plating. That has to be for shuttles and observers, which is hilarious. You never see that. <laughs> he doesn't have any yet, but that is actually what he's doing, which is kind of funny. Okay, I'm I'm excited by it. I hope it's something people start to do. It's funny to get air upgrades uh, for shuttles and observers. It's really, again, not something you think of. Either way, the Reavers in here being a little bit annoying, picking off some units here and there. Your Reaver is a little bit more expensive than a Siege tank, so you definitely want to have them get a little bit more than that. He's killed off a few depots. He's making it annoying to deal with, right? Look at that. Kills off a Goliath, flies out of there. He's just, he's buying some time. You know, he's harassing a little bit, building up his bank. And you can see that supply, it is important here uh, for his opponent. You know, you only have enough room, basically, in your main base to get enough depots to max out. And he's got to remake a bunch of those now. So pretty heavily supply blocked. Setting up some pretty good defense here as well in that fifth base location. Needs to make sure he's holding on to that. Speed shuttles flying around. Looks like he's going for a massive drop here. And I think that drop is easily enough to destroy this economy. But if he gets these units up there quickly, maybe he can do it. Look at this. The vessel coming over as well. Let's see. Throws out the EMP. The EMP actually doesn't do what he was looking for. The storm got off. Uh, and he actually missed that High Templars regardless. Some SCVs will end up dying. Some units will end up dying. But overall, that was a good hold. That was a really good hold. Can't be sad with that one. The Archon block and that Scarab as well. Kind of nice for him. So, maintains his base. And taking a look. The banks, that's not, that's not unbeatable. You know, if MC had been mining from these two bases for a while, he'd have like an 8k bank. And then you'd be nervous. You'd be like, well... I'm holding for now, but it's not going to last forever. Right now, it might last forever. It's possible. He is going to, you know, start pushing. And then I think it's pretty clear you want to push towards these two bases. Like, everything over here doesn't matter that much. This is important, but really it's the bases on the left side of the map. So I think if you push through the center, you can probably secure this. <coughs> and if you get another base, you're feeling pretty darn good. Now, another big drop comes in. Try and get Storms off. Again, the SCV count not really affected. Not yet, anyways. 54 is completely fine for this stage of the game. MC doing another attack into the Siege Lines. This attack not doing as well. Maybe if he had some more Zots in there, but he does not. It's mostly Dragoons, so the spread Siege Tank's doing a very, very good job. More units rallying in right now. Some Zots trying to go through this kind of barren base, but overall very, very efficient there for his opponent. Now both sides have a used up bank. Look at this. Both them very, very low, about the same supply. But we have 15 more workers for MC. So it's actually like a 25 army supply advantage. I think MC has maybe been a little bit too aggressive with some of these drops. Uh, that's, that's kind of the thing. And I think that Royal in particular is very good against this style. Uh, the style of mass speed shuttles is extremely good at getting ahead. It's extremely good at harassment and fighting mid-game against Terran pushes. But it's hard to kill your opponent, even if you get ahead. Because if they just kind of sit there and turtle, your gateway, your gateway army with, like, shuttles and, and high templars, and that doesn't actually kill Terran, right? So, like, Royal took it real, real slow for a real, real long time. And you see now he's doing this massive, massive push. Now, it's not to say that MC can't break this. He's got a lot of gates over here now. Don't forget, he's still got those shuttles. So, like, we don't see any anti-air. These these could be taken out. He's got an Arbiter out now, too. Look at how red these are. If he drops a few Zealots on here, honestly, he'll clear a lot of tanks. Okay, well, that's a Dragoon. That's not what you were looking for, unfortunately. Looks like he just doesn't have many Zealots to deal with this. 
Looks like this Nexus should probably be dealt with. I tell you, one side storm on that would kill about five, six tanks as well. That would be nice. Laying a few mines down and everything. All right, starting to pick up some of these Zealots, some of these Reavers. You know, if he kills off these tanks, the game can start to turn around once again. Right? Like, the production for Royal is, is fine, uh, but it's going to get lower eventually. Well, I guess he's still got two pretty healthy bases. Like, two... Two healthy bases on 3-2 or 3-3 three, three upgrades is, like, that's that's fantastic for Terran. You can basically produce off of that. Some good, good Scarabs, though. Utilizes the cloaking field on that Arbiter expertly. Siege tanks and Goliaths moving over here across. Still some Zealots in here. Reaver as well. Uh, might be a little bit sloppy. Tries to get in here. Drops that Reaver out. Gets blown up immediately. Great EMP onto that Arbiter. Zod's coming in for the flank. Oh, this is the moment for MC. This is the important moment. With these Zod's coming out from that left-hand main, he is going to be able to kill off all the Seed Chanks. They have nowhere to micro to. They're going to get into cannon range. Not looking very good, unfortunately. Sieges them up to get maximal damage before they all die. But now he's got to back up again. And look at that supply differential. We are up a good 40 supply for MC right now. Now, there are a few extra units here beyond what he really needs, so maybe he can bring some of those units. The rest of his units rallying out as well. But I think you you might need to slow this game down again, right? Like, he got himself into this one position where he did a very strong push. <coughs> Excuse me. Didn't quite get the kill. In fact, didn't even kill this Nexus. 15 health. That's painful. But now I think he's actually got to think about splitting the map. Right? Like, he's got to think about getting himself at least a couple more bases. Uh, but anyways, right now, laying a ton of mines. MC flying in. He's got a lot of size storm in here. Trying to wait until units are in, in range so they don't get auto-targeted. You want that low uh, priority on the, the High Templars to pay off for you here. And he's losing all of his Arbiters to these Goliaths. More tanks, more Vultures still rallying up. Still a very close game, which I got to say is surprising to see. You know, MC, the StarCraft II legend, coming to StarCraft One. He's been here a while now. He's been practicing hard, but this is literally an ASL champion in Royal. Just one of the best Terrans in the entire world, and he is really giving him a run for his money right now. Looks like those Zalts will get cleaned up as well. More Dragoons coming down for MC. Keeping that little bit of a supply advantage. Hmm, where did that go? That command center. I'm honestly not... Ah, there it is. Okay. Flew it over there. Uh, looks like, yeah, he is starting to mine here while pushing this base. So this is like a double whammy, right? He gets another base. You kill this Nexus. And honestly, I don't think you ever push in here. I think if you push in here, he becomes so cost efficient in this area that you'll actually end up losing the game as Royal, I think. Like, there, certainly there can be situations where you do get in there and there's no Psy Storm, but, uh, yeah, it's those those spots are very, very hard uh, to push into. Now, a lot of Dragoons coming down. No other supporting units there. He does have some Psy Storms coming out of the shuttles and all. And actually, so many Dragoons, he's going to pummel through these Siege Tanks. Loses quite a few of them. This Siege Tank actually still doing massive, massive damage up at that mineral-only base. And now this base under fire by MC. <coughs> Dropping out some more Zealots to flank. Oh man, the Zealots gonna help to kill off these tanks. Look at how many goons are being splattered by this huge siege tank fire. MC going to be able to break this base. This is gonna bring uh, Royal back down to just two bases. And he's lost a lot of very high quality units through this as well. Very, very tough situation right now for our ASL champion. MC rallying down more and more Zealots. The Dragoons picking off some of these mines so that the Zealots can actually get in on top of the Siege Tanks. Ooh, good micro there. Very well controlled right now from our Terran God. <laughs> He's like, honestly, I felt like he was dead a couple times this game, but continues to fight back. And GG is called by Royal, decides he doesn't have enough to push through. MC going to take him down the GSL champion, one of the goats, doing it in StarCraft 1. Hope that you guys enjoyed.